Hello guys and welcome to another video with CAS on the Mizuma channel. Today once again we're going to work on the problem of transferring signals or yeah, transferring information in general. So in this case we have a classic problem where we want to transport signal strength levels because those are a lot of information, right? So say we want this to be here, so we flick the lever, signal strength of 12 should show here. It takes a while because, well, <laughs> it has to go through this long distance of alternating uh, comparators and solid blocks and redstone dust we do this and this is the best we can do uh, in survival to make to speed up the process and balance the cost because a lot of comparators this is going to be a little bit expensive and a little bit annoying to build in survival there are ways to transport information instantly uh, that i will not show in this video uh, by information in this case i'm talking specifically about signal sprint levels uh, which are amazing for mini games and other applications like that oh my god it's so slow <laughs> so uh, what i'm about to show you in this video is a way to uh, make this process a little bit better and here's the setup i wanted to show you guys today so here's where we can set a signal strength level and this uh, green circuit will basically send the signal through a, a single line to a receiver. The receiver is going to be the, the blue circuit and there are three variations of those, actually four that I will build one of those web with you guys in the end and they work slightly different from each other. So let's see a quick demonstration. So if we set our output to be a signal strength level one, we just need to press the button and there we go. There is your one. It's also storing the one in here. If we change the value, let's just turn this off for sake of uh, consistency and maybe send a 11 so click the button and here you can see the signal spread levels changing and it's going to stop exactly when it uh, reaches 11 this one is also storing a 11 in there so yeah this is <laughs> quite interesting way of doing this because uh, what it does is it takes signal strength levels, converts it into pulse length modulation, and then once it gets uh, at the receiver, it converts the pulse length back uh, into signal strength level. So it's uh, signal strength to pulse length to signal strength conversion. <laughs> and uh, this really cool system was uh, presented to me by Amino. Uh, he plays on ore so thank you very much amino and i, I made just a few uh, improvements or changes in here just to make the circuit a little bit more compact and only to toss so these things can be stacked uh, as memory devices or anything really and uh, as you can see you can basically transport signal strength uh, using only redstone dust and a few repeaters and it uh, doesn't matter the distance so this is really cool maybe you can even use uh, instant repeaters to do that which would be kind of cool <laughs> okay so let me show you the differences between those circuits let's start by showing you this so what this does is uh once you set it and i press the button uh it's going to read the signal strength from this one because as you can see this comparator is being blocked by this uh repeater in here so once the the circuit has the value in here it's going to create a fader a fading timer in here uh, and as a result this repeater will remain on for this uh, whole time uh, on the receiver side we the main thing are those four blocks this this is what does the job in here so we have this subtracting from this and back from this so this is uh, whatever this is uh, decreasing this is going to be increasing and decreasing and doing magic things and then uh, here uh, on this the, the darker blue blocks we have a memory storage device so basically this one is once it gets the the first signal it's going to clear the memory and then this comparator is going to get uh, the signals back in there all right so let's uh, do a quick demonstration here once again so you can see the signal fading in here see yeah and on the, on the other side you can see what's going on so this is increasing yeah and uh, yeah this is how we get the the values in there so very smart system by amino uh there is one problem if you're going to if you're going to operate this directly using a button so if you're sending a very short signal like a one if you press the button you will notice that the signal gets sent twice let's watch the redstone line back there one two so yeah it sends the signal twice so if you want to avoid this you can just activate uh the sender using a two tick pulse let me get my hot bar on in here so two tick pulse in there short signal so it's a signal strength level one if i do this see signal is sent only once so this is uh one way to operate this thing so let's talk about the differences between those three receivers 
So uh, if I send a three in here, you will see that those two will store the value. So see, there's a number three in here as well as in there. Uh, but the thing is, if you notice, let's send a 10 now. Uh, if I send a 10, you will notice that uh, this thing keeps increasing. So uh, it might get in the way of your, if, if your system is trying to read this memory in here, uh, it, it might create problems for you because of this value is changing until it stops. So this is what this secondary circuit sor sorts out because you can read the value from this changing memory or you can read it from here. Let me try to uh, slow down the game by a half and uh, show you what's going on in here. So. Uh, as I send the signal, uh, have I sent it? Uh, as I send the signal, you will see that this gets cleared, and now it's only going to just show the value when it's finished. See, now it shows the 10. So this will keep changing pretty much like the first circuit, but this one will basically suppress the output until it's done. Let's change the value so that uh, you guys can see it more clearly. Turn this off. Okay, so we're going to send a 9 this time. Uh, once again, signal gets suppressed, 10 disappears. And once it's done, it appears again as a nine. So see, all right. So the difference, let's try to set it to a even shorter value, maybe a seven, right? The difference with this final circuit in here is that it doesn't store the information like these ones. It just converts it back into a short pulse. So let's send the information. And there, as, it, as you can see, it doesn't change until the end. And then it's going to send a seven quickly see <laughs> it's a little bit hard to see uh, and uh, the, the cool thing about this pulse is that it's a two tick pulse and it's important because then it's going to be interpreted as a single pulse by uh, uh, by observers uh, otherwise it's going to emit two, uh, two pulses let's see that in action let's watch the piston see so it outputted a seven in here so we can read uh, 15 different values. It cannot send a zero uh, with this configuration at least. Uh, but uh, yeah, we have all the 15 different values, but it can also generate one pulse, a single pulse, because this is a two tick pulse uh, at the end in here. So uh, as I mentioned before, there is a variation of this circuit that is slightly more uh, compact and a little bit cheaper that I will build with you guys. But the other circuits, they don't require uh, a tutorial. You can see everything from the top. Just make sure uh, to have the comparators that need to be in subtraction mode uh, and those that don't. So yeah, get it right. So this is what you need for your uh, transmitter. And uh, this is the first receiver. Cake gives out a signal strength level of 14 and uh, all the other. So this one is in subtraction mode and everything else doesn't really matter. And uh, with this one, uh, the memory circuit is the exact same, uh, yeah. But here we have uh, a, a, a container of level 14, so the same as the cake. But in this case, I needed it to be a solid block so that we can send a signal through uh, the container. So yeah, this is the, the contents inside it. And uh, yeah, the target block is in here to turn this wire in there. And finally, this one, everything is visible. Just notice that uh, this is set on two ticks and this one is set on one tick. It only works in this configuration. And uh, yeah, target, target, cake. Uh, and let's build the other one. So here to the right, I have an exact copy of this circuit. And the way you modify it is by deleting this line and also this line. So that's going to be a little bit shorter. So the comparator goes here. I don't think it matters whether it's uh, subtraction or uh, comparison mode. And here we need a repeater so that this gets signal strength level 14, which is important. Uh, all right, so yeah. <laughs> so this is a slightly uh, cheaper and also this, I believe this needs to be set to one tick. Uh, and uh, yeah, we can send the signal again. It's going to be a seven. So yeah, the, the, the game's back on regular speed now, so it's harder to see, but uh, yeah, it's going to send a little pulse in there. So if I compare this, it's also going, it's also going to be uh, the two tick pulse that I mentioned before. So see that the, the observer pulses only once, but there's one thing I just noticed. So here, let's compare those two. If we send a signal strength level of 15, you will see that this guy's gonna pulse twice and this guy's gonna pulse once. See, this guy only once, this guy twice. So yeah, there is this problem here. So 
this one is more compact but if you need to rely on this thing of putting a two tick pulse then i would stick uh, with this version rather than this other version in there uh, and another thing to to uh, to take into consideration is that uh the pulse length generated by this guy is not the same thing as a pulse length generated by a, any regular device so uh, as i mentioned many times in the past a button has a pulse length of 10 so if i press the button in there you will see that uh, the devices actually get a 5 so it's roughly the the half uh, half of the value, you know, so let's try four tick pulse in here And the devices should get a two <laughs> Well, if you give it a, a three then they're going to get a one see so yeah, this this correlates the so real pulse lengths correlate uh, to uh, to the pulse lengths that those guys require by a ratio of two to one basically uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully you guys were able to copy all the designs uh, this is really a very interesting and useful creation by Aminio and then uh, later modified by me. I hope it's helpful for your own projects or minigames and more complex systems in general. So once again guys, thank you very much. There's going to be uh, in the video description I will include a link to my data transmission playlist where all things related to data transmission and things like this will be, well, collected. So thank you very much for, for watching guys. Leave a like if you liked the video. Hope to see you guys soon. Goodbye.